Okay. Here, we Here we go. All right. We are live. Happy Monday, everybody. Today is January 29th. I do like the camera. You guys were right about this. <laughs> uh, I am super excited to have my guests on today. We have Sean Roberts and Josie. Pantoja. <laughs> Did I do it right? Yes. Uh, I had to sound that out. Mom's here and she's the director. Uh, this is new. We're a little bit further away. So a lot of you said Let, we got to see more of you and not your head, Ted, and I appreciate that. <laughs> Bob Moylan, I see you watching. Can you let us know you can hear us and see us? Today's message is super, super important. Who's Hot Radio? There's Bob right there. Let us know you can hear us and see us because I really, really, really want everybody to be able to listen to Sean and Josie's message today. Uh, welcome to the show. So Josie was a great surprise today. <laughs> Sean said, can I bring someone from AMRAC, one of the students, uh, one of the people? And I said, well, absolutely. You can hear us. Thank you. Oh, Angela, thank you so much. Um, I can almost read that. I'm getting so old, so I might have to have somebody do, I, but I can see that part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so Sean is with, Sean Roberts is with AMRAC, and I hashtag that, and we'll, we'll talk about that later. But I want to get uh, the message across that we are talking about bullying and stopping bullying and putting an end to bullying. And I think that there, I didn't, I'll hashtag it later, but I think there's so much in the news now, not just about what we all think, which is the schoolyard bullying, which is still prevalent. There are all types of bullying. You have them at school. You have them in the workplace. Um, there's a lot of buzz around Hollywood right now, what's going on out there. And I think that it has become such an epidemic. And I love the fact that we are fighting back and challenging the bullies and really trying to figure out a solution to it. So I'm super excited to have them on. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate You're welcome. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. So, Sean, give us a little bit of background about you. Oh, Julie Hanahan's on. I can see her. Hey, Julie. <laughs> um, give us a little background about you because um, I've read the articles. He came in, look at him all dapper out in the <laughs> leather jacket. and the, Oh, you don't have the sunglasses on anymore. He looked, <laughs> he looked great. Um, still do, by the way. But what's your background? Why AMRAC and how did that come into play? Okay. Um, my name is Sean Roberts. I'm originally from New York City and I relocated. He doesn't talk like a New Yorker. Talk, <laughs> talk a little louder, Sean. Come on. Um, I'm from New York City and I relocated to Orlando, Florida because I love warm weather and I love the people down here as well. Uh, and how I came up with AMRAC is basically this is what happened in the industry. Um, I was doing a project with an individual and I contributed to that project and what happened was they wanted to take all the credit for the project. They want you to speak louder, Sean. Oh, I'm sorry. They wanted to take all the credit for the project and leave me out of that. So what I decided to do was create a project where that I put my team together to make a statement and that statement is, let me show you what I can do. Not to do anything disrespectful, but just to show them that I'm capable and able to do things that are positive. So in doing so, um, I embarked on this project and I incorporated some amazing people. Um, but why, why? So why? Okay. were you bullied as a, as a kid? I mean, I think it's really important for us to talk about the okay. issues and what brings you to the table. Okay. Why bullying? Why, there's a, a, a whole bunch of different, um, obviously there's a million different causes you can get behind. Mm -hmm. Why bullying for you? Well, bullying, um, affects people in all walks of life and what I wanted to do is I wanted to change the way the kids and the individuals feel about themselves as they are being bullied and that's what the arrow represents in AMRAC and AMRAC is karma spelled backwards. So, oh, so listen, if you can, and let me know that you can hear him. Angela, let me know, because Angela's really good about this. Okay. That I wondered where the AMRAC name came. Yes. So that's karma spelled backwards. Correct. I love that. Yes. All right, but did you, so when you, were you motivated by the, the people that were talking to you, the people that were giving you their stories, telling you their stories? Is that, is that why you decided to focus on bullying? The, the focus is to help these, in, these kids and individuals that are killing themselves. And what I wanted to do was change their way of thinking. And so how we do that is we point out all the positives that they can do, what they contribute. So for example, let's say a person is a singer and they've been bullied. So what we do in AMRAC is we give them the opportunity to sing. And so we focus on the positive of that individual 
as opposed to the negative that's happening. Okay, so what you're doing is you're taking, so they've got a, hor and we're going to talk about Josie's experience in a bit. I want to try to get some history. Look, this is pulling teeth trying to get him to give us a little history here. <laughs> um, so tell us a little bit about you and your background. So you're a filmmaker by yes. trade. Yes. So you didn't just automatically, hey, I'm born and I'm a filmmaker. So give us a little bit of history, and we're going to get Josie's history in a minute too. But Absolutely. Tell us a little bit about you. Well, you know, I started off on promoting music artists, music, music talents, and and then from there, um, I did music videos, and then one day I decided to do uh, the AMRAC film, which has individuals who have been bullied, um, giving them that opportunity to act, sing, and, and do all those things that I mentioned earlier. And so this was my first film. Uh, we had it at Universal Studios uh, AMC uh, Movie Theater. And what we focused on is changing your views on bullying. We want you to change your views by becoming part of the movement. It's not just a film, but it's a movement as well where that you can help individuals who are feeling low about themselves feel good and positive. So the, the film was my first film, and what, what I'm showing everybody is that if you believe in yourself and you wanna do something, you can do it. Because I had a lot of people saying, you're no producer, you can't do this. And they were saying it. And I said, you know what, that's okay. I'm still gonna get it done anyway. So there were haters. You had haters. Yes, absolutely. You had haters, but mm -hmm. you you had a film background. So you had created music. You did music videos. You Correct. said yes. Um, and you had created short films, long films. There's short films and uh, music videos. Okay, and mm -hmm. so this just became a personal journey for you to absolutely. encourage and empower uh, people. And it, and right now you're working with kids, yes. mostly kids. But we talked about it earlier. Is that uh, this is across the board an issue wherever you're at uh, people are experiencing it you're still experiencing it which is crazy to me but my my son had um, an experience and I'm gonna get to Josie right now okay. uh, with it and I think it's so important to talk about it because okay. there's so much alleged discussion in the schools but there really isn't an implementation plan not one that is successful enough and uh, Josie um, and Julie Honahan's on here Trevor's such a proponent, her husband, at Glenridge, <laughs> of making sure that stuff is actually implemented and that it, it, it really is addressed. Mm -hmm. So, Josie, welcome to the show. You're a, you are a welcome guest. I'm very happy to have you here. I'm very happy to have mom, who's behind the scenes. Uh, she's, she's producer of the day. Um, tell us a little bit about you and why this movement, why AMRAC, is important. Well, I was bullied when I was younger, and being able to be in anti-bullying films and um, other anti-bullying things, it's great to see how we can help others, you know? So tell me about your situation. Was that, has that, is that an ongoing thing? Was it traumatic enough, and that's why you decided, hey, listen, I want to do something about it. I don't want to be just silent. Well, it actually happened in second grade, which is pretty young. And <laughs> but it happens all the time. I mean, yes. I think it happens in all grades. And I'm now homeschooled, so I don't really have to deal with that anymore. But being bullied and seeing how it affected me and how it affected other people that were bullied around me, um, I want to be able to help because I know how it feels. And so what do you do with AMRAC? What do you do to help? What's your... What's, what, it, what is it that you get involved with? Because you were part of the video. We've talked about this, and we'll talk more about it. But so what's in, what is your message you're trying to get across? Are you trying to, you're trying to engage kids, I think, and you, you, you can elaborate on this. You want to help kids know that they're not alone. Yes. We want to help kids know that, like, you keep fighting, and you don't want to, like, stop fighting because... Even if you're going through rough times and you're, you're being bullied, you can still find a way to like, see the bright side of it, you know? Sure. And I think one of, the, one of the biggest things that's happened and come out about bullying is that there, there seems to be more prevalence with suicide. A lot of the kids are uh, taking to social media and talking about uh, how they can't handle it anymore, how they are, um, and they're taking their lives. Uh, there's a whole series on Netflix, yes. 13 Hours, 13 something. Um, it's, got, it's got a name. But the <laughs> I thing, watch it. I'm terrible. My wife watches. She said, yes, 13 Reasons Why. 
See, that's why we have mom here. It's awesome. <laughs> um, but that, it, it's just, and I don't think that parents realize until your kid's impacted by it, how much of it goes on at school every day. My son um, was bullied. I asked him every single day for a couple of years, because I think as a parent, you can tell when your child's behavior begins to change and when they begin to be more withdrawn or they don't, they're not as excited about school or school activities or going to anything with their friends. And so my son experienced that from some of my wife's closest friends' kids um, that they probably don't even know about and would probably be mortified about uh, but you, d unless, and I engaged him and I still couldn't get the answer out. It's not like it's talked about and it should be, you should be able to talk about it more. Now, thankfully, Hunter um, is a sort of well adjusted teenager. We'll go with that. Uh, he'll be 20 this year. Mm -hmm. um, but it definitely was traumatic for him. So imagine if you don't have your parents supporting you, you don't have your parents asking. It must be incredibly difficult to be in school um, and have to deal with that and then still do all of your things you have to do. You still have to go to school. You have to do homework. You have to pass your exams. And it's so much stress on the kids, especially uh, because they have all of this other stuff going on. And may I say something? Please. And, and, and this is your show. Bring it. <laughs> and, and the most interesting thing is what we're doing, and it's just an old school method of how I grew up. Um, my age is 46, and what we- 46, you yes, look good. <laughs> I appreciate it. And, and what, we, what we did in the community is that the community raised the kids. So if you didn't have any parents, the community became your parents. And so that's what we're doing with AMRAC, is that you may be feeling low and feeling by yourself, but you have people out there that care about you and support you. And so we welcome you, if you're feeling that way, to join us, to join the AMRAC family from all walks of life. It doesn't matter, black, white, Puerto Rican, rich, poor, it doesn't matter. What matters is that is your heart and your ability to help someone make a difference for someone else. And so what I do is I take kids to talk to kids to help kids. And so what it does, it builds up to adulthood so we can change our community, change the way we think, to change the way we do things. So tell me more about joining AMRAC and the movement, because it's not just a film. We talked about the film. Right. So this is an organization. Do you, yes. when, when you encourage someone uh, like you just did to be part of the movement, yes. do they, are there, do you guys meet regularly? Is it um, a session where everybody gets to talk about what they want. How does that look if somebody wants to become okay. a part? Um, several ways. Uh, one, we have a web page, which is amracantibully.org. You can join us that way. And also, we have a show, and we film the show every Wednesdays at, in Baldwin Park. And you can come to that show and be a part of that show. We welcome kids who have been bullied, who are feeling alone, and we allow you to be a part of that and to share your story so you can help someone else. We're not there to embarrass you. We want to welcome you and help you share your story and have you be a part of what we're doing. We're not, we just don't talk about things, but we have you get involved. So if you like to sing, you like to dance, you like to act, we give you opportunities to do that. Yeah, you're giving them an out, it sounds like, you're giving them an outlet mm -hmm. uh, where they can, like you said, focus on the positive because right now in their lives, if they're being bullied and they don't feel like there's a support system there, um, and that doesn't mean that their parents aren't being supportive, but a lot of the kids hold it in, they keep it in and they don't talk about it. Um, and so you're giving them an opportunity to go uh, be around other people who sort of feel the same way or have been through it and so there's a camaraderie there, and then there's also the ability uh, to focus on the positive things that they may be able to do, like Josie sings. Right. Uh, we've got Riley Honahan who sings, yes. uh, and there are other things that the kids can do so that the focus comes off what they're dealing with and try to build up their self-esteem, I would imagine. And I want to give you some examples. Uh, just last week we had a uh, person, the person looked like they were 13 years old, but they were actually 22. And wow. what was happening was that that person attempted to take their, li their life twice. Mm -hmm. And they were feeling 
withdrawn and feeling bad about themselves, and that person sings. And the person was, well, that, that young kid, well, young person, excuse me, was singing her song to me, and I was like, well, where did those words come from? And she said that was her suicide note oh, that she wrote. And it was really powerful for me because this was coming directly from a person who had those thoughts and attempted to do that. So what she did, and this is exactly what I said, is that she took her negative thoughts and made it into something positive. So now she has a song. And so she had a positive experience there. And this is what we want. We want you to have a positive experience and we want you to help someone else. And how often do you meet? How often is the group uh, meet? We usually meet uh, every Wednesday. Oh, on Wednesdays, yes, that's right. At Baldwin Park and it's the AMRAC show. And we allow kids who have been bullied uh, to be a part of it. And you wear our colors, which is black and white, which is the yin and the yang, working together. I love it. And um, that's what we do. We come out, you be a part of it, you meet some amazing people, and we have you join us and do the amazing things that we do. So how have, have you enjoyed it? Josie, what, what's your favorite part of AMRAC? Well, being able to sing my to sing <laughs> our song <laughs> and being able to see the talent that other people bring. That's awesome. And you do have a, you wrote a song, right? Yes, yes. I wrote a song. Now, is it on the website? And we'll talk about the song in a minute, but it's on the website. How do people hear it? Um, actually, uh, the song, we're going to be producing it. Uh, we're going to be producing a new music video called I Matter. I wrote the song simply because I, it was two young kids I was working with, which was Josie and Riley. And, you know, I would go around and see them perform. And, you know, no disrespect, you know, they were performing great talent, and, and I believe that they could do more, meaning that they can have their own songs, their own songs. Sure. And so one day we went out, we met in Winter Park, and we had a nice dinner, and I had the song there, and this young kid next to me took the words, and the mother was trying to help her as well, and she was like, <laughs> nope, I got it. And so she it. took the uh, awesome. she took the words and we created this. Um, she she helped create an amazing song. And then Riley, um, she was like, "No, nope, I got something for you." And she wrote her own song. Yes. And so both broken. These, yes, broken. Yeah. And um, both these kids are just doing amazing things. And it, it's amazing for me because I'm a little personal with it. That's all right, man. You got a passion for it. Let it go. But it's amazing to see these kids just do amazing stuff. It is. It's beautiful. And you're giving them, what's, a, what's awesome about what you're doing is you're giving them a platform. You're giving them an amazing platform for this. And a lot of times, it, they don't have that. They, they don't have the uh, voice. They have no voice, or they feel like they have no voice. And this is, again, not a reflection on parents or teachers. There's so much going on in everyone's world, and in my particular case with Hunter, my son, he didn't talk, he didn't want to talk about it even when he was asked, because there's such a stigma around being bullied, and it's it's a sign of weakness, or you can't handle it, or people try to minimize it, and they don't realize how painful it is. So I love the fact that you have a love and a passion for what you're doing and giving them a voice, because if they aren't heard, this is what happens. You have them and they're not heard, and so they feel like they have no other choice, and that's why you see a lot of these kids, unfortunately, and their lives um, because they feel like they can't handle it. They don't have the coping skills. So we as a community, which is what you're trying to do, we as parents, we as neighbors, we as religious leaders, we as teachers and educators, we have to come together to support them so that they feel like, okay, it's okay to talk about it, it's okay to challenge it. And that's what that's the voice that you are giving them. And obviously you have a heart for it or you would not be so emotional about it. And I love that and I applaud you for that. I think that's brave. And I think what you do by doing that is you allow them a safe place and a place for them to be brave. Absolutely. So I love that. And we have a song that's coming out, it's called I Matter. And it's an amazing song. And she sings the song. And what we're saying is that you do matter. And, I, and I'm emotional about it because just think about all the other kids who felt like they didn't matter. Correct. And so we're trying to stop those who feel like they don't matter. And we want you to know that you do matter. 
I love that. And I think that um, a lot of kids, I think it's all adults. I, th I think anybody, we talked about this, race, sex, age, uh, whatever it is, socioeconomic, it goes across the board. Absolutely. Bullying is happening. Um, you have Me Too, which we talked about. You have Time's Up. I mean, it goes all over the world and it's constantly in our faces is what's going on. And one of the things that I love about what you're doing is you've got this, so you've got one of the platforms to be a solution. You've got the ability for them to come to you again in a safe environment, and I absolutely love that. I think it's, I think it's amazing. I think it's brave of you to talk about it, Josie. I think the kids who step up, Josie, Riley, um, that is a lot to be able to talk about that because it's not always easy uh, in the school system with other kids. I know you're homeschooled, but you're still dealing with other kids and other people. I think that's very brave of you. And I think it's wonderful that your mom is supporting that. Um, she's behind the camera. I need her here all the time, actually. I'm thinking, I'm thinking Marisol can come up and she can help produce the show on a daily basis. Um, but what are, what are some of the goals, the future goals that you want for AMRAC? What are some of the projects in the future, things that you would like to engage the community with, Absolutely. maybe get their support? Um, what we're looking to do, we have an, another kid. Her name is Lindsay. And um, she has been bullied herself, and so what I have done with her is I allow her to showcase her talent. So what I've done is I allowed her to co-produce with me. Nice. And so she writes for us. She also is going to be producing some of the shows, part of the AMRAC show. Um, we already have four uh, shows already written out. It's amazing. And what we're doing is that, like I said, we're gonna give you that opportunity if you like to sing, you like to act. We have several shows that we're looking to film um, and have regular kids who like to act or sing or dance be a part of that. So we welcome you to, to join us. Uh, we have shirts, we have wristbands, we have t-shirts, support the cause. It's not for wealth for me. I don't care about the money. What I care about is the kids making a difference and changing and that's what we wanna do. We want the kids to change so that our society will change. We're already adults, we're already here, we're stuck in our ways, but we can mold our future by working with kids so that when they become adults, it's better for them. Where did you get the, I know, John, you're right, I should have put the mic on him. <laughs> um, I, that's why I told you, the audience is fine with that <laughs> stuff. No, 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 <laughs> you're right, you're right. Mm -hmm. Where did that compassion and passion that you have come from? Now, I'm not talking about, okay, you saw a need. You, you, obviously, were you raised this way? Is this the environment that you were raised in? Have you always had a heart for kids? Have you been a protector? Have you been bullied? Like, where does that come from? I think a lot of people want to mm -hmm. have that connection, want to know, okay, well, I want to help um, stop bullying too, but mm -hmm. you've taken it 10 steps further. Why? It's really interesting because um, my past experience, I've taught for 13 years. Um, in New York City. Um, I helped write curriculum for kids and so it's really interesting. It's the dynamics of the way I was raised because my, my father, uh, he was a people person and they used to call him the mayor because everyone in the community knew him and so my mother as well and so I'm, I'm a product of them. So that's where all of it's coming from, teaching, working with kids. They were both passionate, passionate compassionate people. people. Yes. And so that was instilled in you at an early age. Yes. And so that's a, that's a wonderful thing to have. So you felt like you had the safety net. Right. You grew up in that. And so that's helped allow you to be um, more in tune with what's going on and be able to relate to the kids because you've got a passion for what they're doing. I, I think what happens with a lot of people, we talk about it on the show a lot, is that you want to know where that started. Where did that passion come from? We know where Josie's came from because mm -hmm. she was bullied in second grade, so she's got, a, she's got a passion and a compassion and empathy for what's going on in the world, especially with kids. Mm -hmm. um, but you've t you both have taken it a step further and have gone the route of doing more than just saying, I want to stop bullying. I want to be done with bullying. Because what it is is that what you see every day is negativity. Negativity sells. And I'm upset about it because that's not who we are. That's not who we are as um, human beings. We're better than that. And so 
you know, negativity does sell. You're absolutely yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. I think people get so caught up in that. If you watch any reality TV show, um, God, even some of the regular shows on TV that all of us are exposed to, it's not just kids anymore. So we, we've created the TV and movies have created a different norm right. for us. And it's really not the norm. It shouldn't be like that. You should be able to go to school, feel safe, feel protected, know that administrators and teachers have your back. Uh, you should be able to go to your parents, uh, whatever the situation is, or your caretaker, and be able to s express how you're feeling and know that something's going to be done about it. A lot of the institutions, this is workplace and schools, they have a, no, uh, they have a zero tolerance for bullying. And yet, when you try to implement that, when you try to have um, a student expelled who might be bullying, uh, you, f you have to fight it. I have a friend who was on the show mm -hmm. recently and she talked about her daughter who is at a private school and she is having the fight of her life even though they have a zero mm -hmm. bullying, zero tolerance for bullying, they don't want to get rid of her, that child. Mm -hmm. So they will sacrifice the uh, child that they're trying to um, get better, the bully, mm -hmm over the person who's being bullied and you imagine if that one person came forward how many other people are being bullied by that same person and and, and this is what we want to do we want to implement soldiers vessels so in other words what is happening in which in our society is ac acceptable is you know what that's not my child i don't care that's true it doesn't matter um, but it does matter um, step in so when you become an amracker we want you to step in Step in. If you see something wrong, make a difference. It take, I mean, kids could do it. Adults can do it. Anyone could do it. Just step in and, and say something and do something. And I think what, what we need to make the kids who, especially kids, and I'm calling you a kid, but I know you're a young adult, especially <laughs> kids who want to have a voice about that, right. our school administrators, our parents, our teachers need to be much stronger backers of the kids so that when they do say it, there isn't retaliation. They're not fearing that something's going to happen, or they're not challenged that oh, it can't be as bad as your as you think it is. And I'm not giving the educate. My wife's an educator. I'm not giving educators a hard time. I just think sometimes the kids see well, it's not going to do me any good. That person's still going to be back in school. The school has a zero tolerance for bullying. Yet that kid continues to get in trouble. Yet continues to come back. Um, and we have to be stronger as educators, parents, teachers to really embrace the fact that that person needs to get help on their own time, get them out of the situation, and the person who's being bullied should not be the, they, they can't be re-victimized over right. and over again. So, all right, any last uh, words from both of you, any parting words? I know you, you have some, a mantra, and you talked about it earlier, meaning a saying that you say all the time to kids, but anything you want to leave them with, Josie? Mine was to keep fighting. Wait, what was it again? <laughs> that, that was part of it. We're just glad she's not coughing. There she goes. There oh, she goes. Sorry. Um, yeah, it was to keep fighting and to not give up on yourself. Yes. That I was love it. that. I love that. And thank you for being brave enough to come on the show and talk about it. And I know that second grade's far removed, but you're in it and you see it and you know it and it impacted you enough um, and your mom that you guys are big proponents of it. And I'm so happy that you are here. I appreciate it and I appreciate yeah. you too, mom. All right, yes. any other words of wisdom? Well, first I wanna thank you for allowing me to be on your show. Happy you're here, and both of you. Spreading the word and what we want to leave individuals out there is this um, let's be better than who we are and by doing so join the movement um, come out Wednesday um, join the web page support we have shirts we have wristbands it's amrec antibully.org support the cause um, it's not about money it's about making a difference agreed so we will post all of the you are all the website information contact information now that I know what amrec means. Uh, I was like Amtrak, Amrak. But I knew that there was a meaning behind it. And it's so important. I'm very glad that you shared it. We'll post all of that. Uh, you guys have been a joy. Mom too, thank you for your help. Uh, we've got to stop it, people. It's impacting us. 
My son's almost 20 and still remembers it. Mm. Um, we have to remember that the kids don't forget, and we don't forget either. Look what's going on in the world. You can just read the paper every day, go on social media. It's such a big epidemic, and we have to work together uh, to make sure that we can end bullying, stop bullying. We love you guys. If you've been bullied, reach out to me. Reach out to Sean. There are so many ways for us to get you to a safe place and a safe place to talk about it. And we really encourage you to do it. Don't go through it by yourself. Don't. All right. We love you. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you tomorrow. Right, thank thank you. you.